In this video, we're going to learn how to make fresh pasta dough. So we're going to start by uh, making our flour into a mound. So we could do this right on uh, our work surface, but I like to use a, uh, a half sheet tray here. Uh, it just kind of confines the mess a little bit and it makes cleanup a lot easier in the end. So that's what I'm gonna do this on. Um, I'll also uh, note that <clears throat> under this half sheet tray here, uh, I do have a damp towel uh, just to kind of keep it firmly in place as I'm working the dough. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my flour onto my board. I'm gonna make a little mound with a well. Okay, so you can see I have this nice mound with a well in the middle. And then into the center, I'm gonna add my eggs, my oil, and a pinch of salt. Now, different pasta recipes may call for different ratios. So I've seen pasta recipes that use all egg yolks um, or some whole eggs and some egg yolks, some that use oil, some that don't, some that use water. Um, any of that is fine. The method is gonna be the same even if the ratio is slightly different. Also, if you're gonna add a, a coloring ingredient, so, um, there's a pasta that uses a squid ink to get a black color. If you're gonna make spinach pasta where you would add some spinach puree, this is where you would do that as well. You would add this in with these eggs uh, at this point. But we're just gonna make a regular pasta dough. So I'm gonna use a fork and I'm gonna start, I'm gonna pierce each of the yolks of my eggs. And then using a circular motion, I'm gonna start just scrambling my eggs in the well. If you find that you didn't make the well big enough or that you're, you're struggling at this point, go ahead and push the sides out a little bit. Okay, give yourself a little more room to work in that well. Okay. And start scrambling your eggs. All right, now that I have a nice base of scrambled eggs, I'm gonna use my fork and I'm occasionally going to go kind of into the well and pull some of that flour in and continue scrambling. So I kind of go around, pull some of that flour in and continue with that same circular motion. Okay, incorporate that flour. Bring more in. And you can see how this base of egg is thickening uh, as I'm using this circular motion and pulling some of this flour in. But you can also see how it's still liquid and still contained within the well that I've created. Just kind of using my hands, pull some of that flour in, continue to work this dough base that I have, this dough center that I have.
can see I'm just kind of working that center back into the middle, making it a little easier to work with. So I still have my egg base in the center. I still have my nice pile around that I'm pulling that flower in from. All right, this is getting a little difficult to work with the fork. So at this point, I'm gonna abandon the fork. Okay, scrape it off. I'm gonna make sure I use a nice amount of flour so it doesn't uh, stick to my hand so much. It's gonna stick a little bit, that's kind of inevitable. And then I'm just gonna use my hands and I'm gonna start a folding motion. I'm gonna fold in uh, enough flour until I get to the desired texture, which I'll show you. Um, so I have a nice amount of flour in my dough ball, and I'm just gonna fold it on top of each other and then push it out, okay? So this folding and pushing motion. And it's still quite sticky, and you can see every time I do this, I'm adding a little flour onto the surface so that it doesn't stick to my hands so much. You can see it does start to stick to your hands a little bit as it's uh, quite sticky at this point, which is okay. We're just gonna get that back onto our dough ball. A little more flour. Okay. And continue to work our dough. Okay, this is coming together really nicely. All right, at this point, I'm really gonna start kneading my dough. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of push some of this flour to the side, because at this point, I'm still gonna have to incorporate a little bit of flour. It's still a little softer than I'm gonna want it to be, but I don't wanna incorporate too much flour. Um, you know, maybe another third of this flour will get incorporated in, uh, and the rest won't. Uh, when making pasta dough, it's not so much about what the recipe calls for, it's about what texture we end with at the end. Okay, a little more flour. I'm just gonna add flour as my dough starts to get sticky again. So as I was kneading, okay, and I'll show you here now. So as I'm kneading now, you see how I'm starting to get a little bit sticky left on my palm here? This is telling me it needs a little more flour, okay? And then we're gonna knead that next addition of flour in. One of the things we're gonna look for to know that this dough has enough flour is that it's gonna be tacky but not sticky. So when we touch it, it's gonna feel a little sticky or a little tacky, but it's not actually going to stick uh, to us. And that's exactly what we're gonna look for with our pasta dough. Okay, so our dough's really close. At this point, I'm gonna drop my pan here. And at this point, I would continue to knead for about 15 minutes, okay? Um, we really wanna get uh, the, deglute the gluten nicely developed. Uh, I have a little bit of extra flour here, and as I continue to knead, um, I can put a little more flour on the board just to make sure it doesn't stick. 
Uh, those starches are going to continue to absorb uh, this liquid. So it will continue to go from like tacky like we have right now to a little bit more sticky. Um, and at that, case, in that, at that point, I could add just a little bit more flour to the board. But we're really done the point where we're adding uh, flour. We just kind of want to maintain this nice texture that we have. And I'll show you. So I have this nice dough ball, and you can see it's nice and soft to the touch, but it's a little springy, right? When I poke it with my finger, when I poke it with my finger, it kind of bounces back. It's a little tacky to the touch, but it's not like sticking to me. Okay, this is exactly what we want to see, and this is the point where we want to start kneading our dough. So I can knead this by hand, just like I'm doing, folding it on top of each other, pushing it out, giving it a rotate, as it continues to, the starches continue to moisten, we add a little more flour, okay, and continue to knead. Uh, I could also uh, knead this in the uh, mixer that we can use. So I have a mixer uh, bowl with a dough hook. Okay. Just a little bit of flour. We do have another video uh, titled Assembling a Mixer. So uh, if you have questions about assembling or using a mixer, be sure to check out that video. So I would set this to a medium low and allow this to mix. I would keep an eye on it. Um, and as it starts to stick to the side of the bowl, I can stop my mixer, add in a little more flour. and keep an eye on it that way. Again, we're not trying to necessarily add more flour to dry it out. We're trying to maintain that nice tacky consistency that we've built. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this mix for about 15 minutes until the gluten's nicely developed. Once that happens, we'll check back in with you and we'll show you that dough. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes of mixing uh, and I've been uh, occasionally adding flour as our uh, starches continued to uh, moisten. Uh, so I ended up adding about half a cup, uh, between a quarter cup and half a cup of flour uh, in as this mix, just little additions at a time to keep that nice tacky uh, texture that we talked about. So you can see here, <clears throat> I still have that nice tacky texture and like as I lift it up, it kind of want to stick to the board, but it doesn't quite stick right. I can lift it up. It feels sticky to my fingers, but it's not sticking on my fingers. This is exactly what I want my pasta dough to be. Um, it's firmed up just a little bit. That's that gluten that we developed. And you can see the difference when I poke it now. See how it much more uh, quickly fills back in. So when I poke it, that whole quickly kind of springs back. That's that gluten. So we've developed all those gluten bands. Uh, and now we need to let that gluten relax. If I went ahead right now and rolled this out, like I'm going to uh, when we roll out our fresh pasta, um, the pasta sheets uh, would spring back, just like we saw when we pressed the dough. So we would roll out the sheets and they would spring back and contract. So we're gonna let this rest in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. Uh, and then once this is rested, we'll come back and we'll cover forming the pasta. All right, so it's been about half an hour. Our pasta dough is nicely rested. And you can see the change that's happened. Now when I poke it, it's very slow to fill back in and it still leaves a divot. And this is exactly what we want. So we developed that gluten and then we let it relax. So we have this nice, soft dough to work with. So to start rolling this pasta, I'm gonna cut it into pieces that I can more easily feed through my uh, pasta roller. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I'm going to make sure I have enough flour on my board. I'm going to start, and I'm going to use a rolling pin. I guess you could just use your hand. Um, but I just want to get this kind of into the general shape of a pasta sheet. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to do a tri-fold. So I'm going to fold in and in. So I kind of make this pocket. And then I'm going to roll this out. And what this does is this kind of creates a weave pattern within our gluten. Um, so it's going to help the pasta have an additional bite. So I made that all the gluten was kind of going one way. I made those strands go out into the sheet. I fold them over and it kind of made that weave pattern. The other thing this does is this gives me a nice square sheet to start rolling from. I do want to make sure that this isn't wider than the uh, rolling attachment that I'm using because uh, this does need to feed through. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flour my pasta sheet. And I really want to make sure that I have a nice amount of flour. What I don't want is I don't want flour like this on. See how this is kind of like caked on? What's going to happen is if I roll this out, I'm going to get uh, pockets of flour in my pasta. So I do want to make sure okay, that it's well coated, but I don't want big pockets of flour. Okay? So I just want my pasta dough just like that. So I'm going to start, I'm using an electric pasta roller today, uh, and I'm going to start on the widest setting and a nice slow speed. As you get more comfortable using your pasta roller, you can, um, you know, increase the speed. But I would definitely start slow just until you get used to the motion. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I feed it slowly in through the top, kind of using my hand as a guide and I catch it down at the bottom. Okay. And I like to do two passes through at each thickness. Okay. So I'm going to go down a size, feed it through, and catch it. And then as I feed it through, I can feel that it's getting to be that tacky consistency again. So I want to go ahead and add a little more flour. It's really going to make your life difficult uh, if this dough gets caught in these rollers. If it's too tacky and it sticks to the roller, uh, it's very difficult to clean. And it's just going to be a big mess. Notice too, as I'm catching my pasta, I'm using like the back or the palm of my hands. I'm not using my fingers to catch it because I'm trying to stretch this dough. Um, and if I use my fingers, it's going to make uh, like thinner parts of the dough. So just catch it as it feeds through. We'll do one more pass through. <laughs> All right, so now I have a really nice pasta sheet. And from here, uh, I can cut my pasta into a variety of shapes. Uh, so one option okay, would be to use a cutting attachment 
uh, on our roller. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that set up. Uh, once I get that set up, we'll demo that and then we'll demo uh, a few other of our uh, cutting techniques. All right, so to use the cutting attachment, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut my pasta to the length that I want the noodles to be. So I think about here will be a nice noodle length. Okay. I again wanna make sure I have a nice amount of flour. Make sure it doesn't stick to my cutters. Uh, and most electric cranks, as well as the hand crank machines, are going to have a, a cutter attachment. I'm using the linguine size, uh, so my attachment has a linguine and a spaghetti size. Some have more, uh, and some have different ones. So I'm just going to turn this back on, and once again, I'm just going to feed my pasta through my cutters, catch it as it comes out the bottom. A little bit of flour on my board. Toss my linguine noodles in the flour. Make little bundles of portions. These sheets are also great for making ravioli. So if I wanted to make uh, a ravioli, um, I could you know, put my filling on the sheet, uh, use a, a cutter to cut out my ravioli. I could also fill it, use my knife to cut square raviolis. Um, I can also cut pasta just with my knife, so cut it the length that I want it. And you definitely, when you do this, want to use a knife, sh nice sharp knife so that you don't mush the pasta together. Okay, and you can see I can just unroll my noodles. Again, I always want to toss my fresh noodles in just a little bit of flour. We have a separate video on cooking uh, fresh and dry pasta. Uh, so for cooking instructions, uh, see that video. Uh, but as for storing, um, fresh pasta stores really well in the freezer. So what I'll do is usually I make nice portions, uh, the portion size that I want. I put them in these little bundles. I'll put them on a sheet pan and hold them in the freezer. Uh, and they hold quite well uh, for a few weeks uh, in the freezer. Um, we don't want to just let them sit out. Uh, they will dry and become very brittle uh, as they're exposed to air. So once we have them in their bundles, we either want to cook them uh, or store them uh, either in the refrigerator or freezer until we're ready to cook them. Let's review. When making fresh pasta, start by forming your flour into a well and then adding the eggs into that well. Whisk the eggs together and slowly incorporate the flour. Next, we're going to knead our pasta until we develop gluten. Once the gluten's developed, we're going to allow our pasta to set for about 30 minutes so that gluten can relax. Finally, when rolling and cutting your pasta, make sure to use enough flour that it doesn't stick to the roller or the cutter, but not so much that we develop pockets of flour in our pasta sheets.